Adrian, are you able hey. to hear me? Hey, yep. Hey, everyone. Welcome to this very special edition of the Tom's Hardware Show, where we are going live with both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. So we can show off both of these new systems and give everybody a, a taste of, of what they're like. Um, I want to remind everyone that we have a chat room available on Facebook, Twitch, Periscope, and YouTube. So we'd love to take your questions in real time. So fire away. If you're not watching this in real time, uh, we're still going to provide you with lots of insight. And of course, this is going to be available as a podcast for those who want to listen to it in audio. So um, I am your host for today, Tom's Hardware Editor in Chief Abram Pilch, and I'm joined by and I'm joined by staff writer Michelle Earhart and Hello. and senior editor Andrew Friedman, who is the one who has the consoles. Where'd you go, Andrew? <laughs> Uh, He's uh, the PS5 took him as tribute. They, there you go. Okay, so we got people Ready? filtering in, wanting to see, wanting to see the new toys. So uh, you've just reviewed both of these, both of these systems. Which yep. one do you like better? I mean, it's really a toss-up. It's such early days for them. I can say they both have a ton of potential. So, I mean, actually, this might be a, a risk, but I'm gonna try to show them to you a bit. If I go here, uh, switch the camera. So, oh, it's upside down, sorry. So, I mean, this is this, this camera's horrible, but this is the Xbox Series X if you want like hand for, hand for scale. And I really like, I really like the design on this one. It's real, it's real subtle. I like this green on the top of the circle. And the PlayStation 5 is ah, right here. And it is a hand for scale. It is a tall, it is a, let me get that out. It's a tall boy. And, but beyond the looks, it's actually got a lot going for it. Um, I mean, the big thing right now is that it's so early that there's very few games on each. So they both showed a ton of performance, which we'll talk about a little bit more. But the PlayStation's got a little bit more going for it for games at launch. So um, can you can you show us uh, any gameplay? Sure. Um, let's bring the PS5 in from our backstage area. Dun, dun, dun. And so here it is. What are we looking at? All right, so this is the PS5, and this is the DualShock 5. Oh, it's not the DualShock 5, it's the DualSense. And I can show you um, some gameplay here from Astro's Playroom, which is the game that comes with the system. So let's hit continue. The DualSense is really interesting because like, this is a little DualSense here. And it's really interesting because it has, like here, for instance, the touchpad, and you use that to swing them off. And the rumble stuff is that really is all really cool. But what I want to show you are the. Let's let you choose between these levels. So let me know what you like. Here's our ram, our memory meadow for ram. Here's our CP or our cooling level, cooling springs. What do you like, Michelle? I got to say GP the, the Rams oh, no. purple is really doing oh, it no. for me. Yeah. Oh, no. What happened to your uh, connection? I'm going to restart that. I clearly having some tear on my Wi-Fi here. There's a few different... While we wait for um, Andrew, I have the DualShock 4 right here. Um which seems to be, the, if you'll notice, there's this light bar uh, that's gone with the dual sense now. Instead, it just sort of goes around the touchpad with a nice little thin strip. Um, it seems like we have Andrew back. 
Now, are all these connecting by Bluetooth? What is the connectivity mechanism? So for the DualShock 4, it's Bluetooth. I believe uh, it's also the same for the DualShock 5, um, which is great because you can also use it for other systems. So like I use this with my PC, I use it with my phone. Um, use it with your Raspberry Pi. I haven't set up the Raspberry Pi, but you can most definitely use it for the Raspberry Pi. There's also a program. It's I'm curious to see actually if this will get updated for DualSense, but there is a program called DS4 Windows that makes it so that your uh, computer, uh, you can also connect it. Uh, your computer will read the DualShock as an Xbox controller, which makes... Uh, configurability and, and um, compatibility much easier. And uh, that's just a tiny little like indie thing. So hopefully it gets adjusted for the dual sense. I'll be curious to see that. Um, what's odd is that the PS4 cannot use the dual sense, but the Nintendo Switch can. Seems like we have our, through an adapter, seems like we have Astro back though. All uh, right. So let's see what Astro is doing. He's going into the memory level. This is expert sports commentary over Astro's playroom. So that looks like Wally -E over there. I think they're all kind of Wally -E esque. Uh, Andrew, can you hear us? Ah, I'm back now. I apologize for that. Can you hear me? These are the the PS4 yeah. needs to eat your soul to power its uh, 4K. Seems like it was going well in our testing, so I really apologize for that. So this is Astro's playroom, and it's frankly it's adorable. I wish you could he feel the controller because I think that's the big thing about this that can't be conveyed in videos. It's how it rumbles, how I can feel the wind blowing against against my palms. Like that's really cool. Um, how you could feel the lasers. And what, the other thing you probably can't really hear is that the, the speaker is actually making sounds. And the PS4 did that too a little bit, but it's synced with Astro's Playroom. The other cool thing about this game, and I'm going to try to purposely not spoil it for anyone, is that it is filled with Easter eggs from just like the greater Sony universe, like the Sony Cinematic Universe. <laughs> really? And so, oh yeah, tons. Well, this we'll is our sequel to PlayStation some... All-Stars? Uh, not exactly, but you'll probably just run into some stuff just by nature of the fact that it's here. Like you know, this might, I actually don't know this one, but somebody might. And so this is, I mean, this is the game that comes pre-installed on the PlayStation. Um, everyone gets it, it's free, and it's actually can even get surprisingly difficult. Yeah, boom. Great. And all of these effects you're um, feeling through the adaptive triggers? And I mean, it doesn't necessarily do much to show off the prowess, but is it's really neat in that regard. Are there any, uh, is there any ray tracing in this game? Not in this game, as far as I know, no. Though there are, there is a level I believe named after ray or maybe I thought there was a level named after ray tracing. Maybe there's not. Oh, yeah, there we go. Ray trace ruins. There you go. Yeah. So they they have a ray trace level, but they don't have ray tracing in this game. No, we haven't really. Well, I've seen a little bit of that. I've seen it in Spider-Man Miles Morales, which I'm not allowed to to stream right now. To discuss. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, I can discuss it. I but that's you gotta they're trying to avoid spoilers, so not till closer to public launch. So right now, this is the big one I can show you. So yeah, the ray tracing does look good. Spider-Man has two performance modes on the PlayStation. There's performance, which is 60 frames per second. And then there's fidelity, which is 30 frames per second, but with ray tracing and all that jazz. Is that a feature that's unique to Spider-Man? Or like, can we expect a bunch of other games to have that too? Um, other games are probably going to have it. I know, for instance, like Dirt 5 on PS4 and Xbox Series, on PS4 Pro and Xbox Series X both had something similar. So, so I think uh, you're just going to see more choice because your can, console can, is offline again. The console's offline. I am so sorry, everybody. We were not but expecting that. I have that, some but questions here. Yeah, let's keep talking about it. 
All I can say for me is the PS5 is not in the league in terms of power. Your thoughts? Um, I mean, I guess that depends on what your league of power is. If your league of power is the 3080 or the 30 or the 3090, I mean, you're probably not there entirely. This is using a custom RDNA, both for the PlayStation and the Xbox Series X. Mm -hmm. Um, the PlayStation 5 goes up to 36, it has 36 CUs and goes up to 2.23 gigahertz. The Xbox Series X has 52 CUs um, at 1.825 gigahertz. So you do, do you prefer a faster graphics card that has fewer CUs, or do you want the one with more CUs that's a little bit slower? Mathematically, that makes the Xbox Series X a little faster on paper. But, I mean, it's not going to compete with the highest-end gaming PCs, right? They've already had a newer Zen architecture. But for consoles, this is really powerful. Like the fact that you can guarantee basically 60 frames per second on any game if you design it, or you can go up to 4K 120 if you've optimized for it. And it's impressive. We just need to see more games actually use it. How's it work with, uh, oh, that moves on to it, what I was going to ask. Yes, uh, Sergeant Lee asked, can both consoles play all backward games? Um, so the answer to that is, sorry, I'm actually trying to switch to the other one right now, but the answer to that is no. Um, the, the PlayStation 5 use, can do basically any PS4 game. There are 10 games that have not been supported, but other than that, it works pretty well. The Xbox Series X can go all the way back to the original Xbox, mm -hmm. but there are a few games like the ones with Kinect that it doesn't support, but it runs many more games just in general. So Jared says, for reference, <laughs> RX 6800 is 60 CUs at about 2.1 gigahertz. Problem is that's a $580 GPU, so $500 for complete console is aggressive on pricing. Isn't that always the case? You you get more for your money with uh, with consoles because they're expecting you to buy the games. I mean, yes. The big thing about it right now is that these GPUs just launched and they're very expensive, right? Where I've actually, I've switched over to the Xbox Series X here. Um, and these are full systems with the new Zen 2 architect, with the new, sorry, not the Zen 2, with the new RDNA 2 architecture. So this is the optimized version of Forza, of Forza Horizon 4 for anyone who's just looking on. I'm just gonna drive around for a bit. It is really pretty. This one's also not using ray tracing to the best of my knowledge. Why is it that car games always look the most realistic? Yeah, gorgeous, right? I mean, even going back to like the PS2 and the PS3, car games always look the most realistic. I mean, Michelle, you used to design games. Why is it that car games look so good compared to every other game? I mean, it's not necessarily anything to do with the genre, but it is really funny because it's it's a lot of environmental detail that you have to make for levels that you're passing by in the blink of an eye. And I think that might help a little bit in the same way it helps with Flight Simulator in that you're not, that's pretty cool that you just broke apart that uh that wall, but you're not necessarily getting up close and smelling the roses with a lot of the environment. So you don't have a lot of time to process the um, sort of, uh, you know, rough edges uh, that might be there. Um, and also the environment is part of the attraction with car games, right? Like it's the spectacle. You have to put a lot of detail into that to make each track feel distinct it's also part of the reason why people play like a, a sonic game right uh whereas like in a, a slower game like gears of war or mario you might want like your players to be in you know one or two rooms for a long period of time so you're going to put more attention on uh those areas instead of building out big environments but I mean, to be honest, if you showed this to somebody real quick, oh, oops, no. they they might think this was a video. Like, I mean, anyway, this is actually an older game, which is funny. This is from Forza and Her Forza Horizon Four came out in twenty eighteen, so I'm really looking forward to Forza Motorsport and Gran Turismo to see what car games really look like. You know, what racing games look like on the newest tech. And and you know, then you add ray tracing to it. 
because the oh, reflections yeah. are already really convincing. I mean, I guess it's because the hardest thing to make what you don't see in any of these games is a human face. And that's mm -hmm. the hardest thing to make. There, there are some human faces in this game. They're not as good. Actually, I want to show you something cool, which is if I push the guide button right here and I want to pick another game, I'm going to say, interesting, my pre-order is updating. Um, let's say Gears 5. It's going to go black for a second. The HDMI signal goes, and you're going to see here, Gears 5 is going to pop up. And then in a second, so this is it switching between games. And it should use quick resume here. And when it loads, OK, well, and when it loads, it should take me. OK, it didn't. Which this is, so this is, I guess, this real time thing. But quick resume is when it works, which it typically does, here it doesn't, is really cool because it just switches you to the point in the game you were without going through everything we're seeing here. So it's a bit of a shame we're seeing that part, but it does work most of the time. Um, there are a few games that do need patches for it to operate effectively, but in general, like you generally get to skip this. And it's kind of unfortunate that I didn't show it immediately right now because let me back, let me try to pick another game and see if that works. Uh, will Xbox run Skylanders? Um, did it ever run Skylanders? Yeah, it's a bit of a meme yeah, game. I, no, I know I what Skylander is. I yeah. played it on I PlayStation. Don't, I don't know if the I actually don't know if the accessor so if the accessor so there's the quick resume thing. Now it goes off. Again, this is just the and bam, I'm back in the game. This is right where I was when I left off. This is that's a very good so, question, William. So that's I, quick resume. Yeah. I, I'd love to find out. I don't know which versions of Skylanders worked on Xbox One. Um was there I mean, it would probably only be the latest one, right? Because I don't, I don't think it was backward compatible with, like, there's like eight different Skylanders games. My son used to be a huge fan of them when we used to play on PlayStation Three, um, and then when we moved on to Nintendo and uh, and Xbox One, we couldn't play anymore. Uh, oh, we've got a question from Matt. Um, how do I feel as someone who reviewed the Herman Miller gaming chair and got to play both new consoles? How do I feel to be the luckiest gamer in the world? Um, this is, a, it's a privilege to get to review this stuff. I absolutely, absolutely think it is. Um, I haven't tried to, I haven't, I don't have a 3080 though. So I guess some people have it better than me, <laughs> but no, it's, it is absolutely a, a privilege to get to try this stuff first. Um, obviously what I would, what I would tell someone is just because other people get to play with it doesn't mean it's immediately necessary for you. I think it's great that we have to review it and tell people how it, how it operates. But I think with both of these systems, you could actually wait and see and do just fine. A lot of these games, like for instance, the ones I'm playing on Xbox right here, are totally playable on Xbox One. And the same for games like Spider-Man Miles Morales on PS on PS5 and PS4 or even Horizon Forbidden West, which is coming out in 2021, will be on PS5 and PS4. So, you know, I get, I'm getting to play with a lot of expensive toys and I'm having a lot of fun doing it, but I do say that everybody should, hopefully they take the experiences we had and they decide if it's worth it for them. And then they pick when it is worth it for them, when these systems have fuller libraries. I mean, it's the only, I'm sorry, you go. No worries. Uh, it just, it seems kind of like they're almost going for more, gaming pc track where you can where the heart the software isn't necessarily the attraction it's being able to play the games you already have but at higher fidelity or, or higher frame rate at, at least for right now i get that more from the xbox than the playstation i think a lot of this is your general every every system where they have those sort of like games that are on, on the edge and then eventually they'll stop putting them up there so I suspect, especially that eventually PlayStation 5 will be all PS5. And I don't, I get the sense with Game Pass that it's definitely more like a PC, right? That you're like, you're just upgrading your PC and seeing everything play in the best way they can play, as opposed to, oh, everything's necessarily going to be better immediately. That being said, I think we've seen a couple games listed for, for Xbox Series X and Series S and one, but then some others that don't say it. So eventually you'll hit the point, right, where the minimum specific specification is one of these or the series S the cheaper brother or sister or cousin. I shouldn't gender the Xbox. 
Um, how are are the um, backwards compatible games right now? Like, are you hitting sixty frames a second or more? Um, it, yeah, I mean, it it depends what it's designed for. I made a big joke in my review that uh, that I downloaded an Xbox 360 game I used to play, Ages Wing, and I got it because it was free on the Xbox Live Arcade, and my brother and I played it all the time because you know games are expensive when you weren't making any money, and. I downloaded it and it worked fine. That game did not go up to 60 FPS, right? That game's not going to see any performance gains. That game is really, really old. But when, whenever things really could, it seemed like they did. I mean, obviously, there are some places that are that have mastered measuring frame rates. Like, oh, shout out to Digital, Digital Foundry. Those guys are great. Um, in this case, you, it doesn't really need a trained eye to show, oh, this is running better than 30. And so anything that could run better than 30 on any of these was clearly doing so. And like it's especially noticed on both the Xbox and the PS5. The real question is, can it play Lego the Skywalker Saga? And when will I get to? I don't remember the exact release date, but there's no reason either of them shouldn't be able to play Lego the Skywalker Saga. Yes. I know the the real the real problem is that that game keeps getting delayed. It was supposed to be this fall, and now it's not going to be till twenty twenty one. We have a big now. Lego the Skywalker saga uh, fan in the office. Yes, well, I'm a big Lego games fan, and that is the next Lego game, which they didn't even come out with one at all this year. Now, a big question we're going to end up having or I think a lot of people are asking is just which one of these is better. That, and, that That's Forza, by the way. Someone was oh, asking yeah, so that's, driving that's, sim. That's, that's Forza Horizon 4. It's a racing game. I wasn't in a specific race. It just lets you drive around this British countryside. And it's really pretty. And so it's optimized. And so I thought I would show that off, which is why I'm about to switch to Gears 5 here. Um, so I guess there's a question of which one is better. Better. And I think a lot of that's going to come down to the ecosystem you're already in. If you have a big library of Xbox games, then it's probably going to be the one for you. If you want Game Pass and 100 or so games that are available, that's probably the one for you. Sony has this reputation for excellent exclusives, right? Spider-Man, God of War, The Last of Us. And if you want to keep getting those games, you really got to go to PlayStation. So it's a question of which one's better. The Xbox is more powerful on paper. But how, you know, that's going to depend on how games are optimized. And so it's hard to say now if the PlayStation is going to be at any sort of, I don't know, is any sort of detriment. But on first impressions, it's plenty powerful on its own. So it really comes down to what you want to play because they're going to have different games, different exclusives. And the Xbox is still waiting for theirs, like Halo. I think the medium was just delayed like today till next year. But they're both going to have Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs and Assassin's Creed. So. You're going to have plenty to play on both, but it just depends on the exclusives you like. And so, keep in mind, the Xbox exclusives will be on PC also. So I have a question. What is the media playback like? Is there any appreciable difference in terms of playing Blu-rays or in terms of using streaming services like Netflix? Sure. Um, I can talk about that more for the Xbox, the PlayStation. I We had PlayStation, as you'll see in the review, in a sort of early access state, which meant not everything was totally ready for prime time. We'll tell you more about the PlayStation 5 long closer to its launch. The Xbox really has basically, and this is this is Gears 5, um, which has also been optimized for Series X. Oh shit. <laughs> um, so the Gears, so it has everything you could really want. Like it's got Netflix, Disney Plus is gonna be there at launch. You're gonna have Amazon Prime and Vudu and Hulu, all that's, all that's really there. So in terms of streaming, everything's there. They both have 4K Blu-ray players, except the PlayStation has a non or an all digital version, which is $100 less. And the big difference is that it doesn't have a, a disk drive. So if you're going entirely digital and you don't want to own discs anymore, then you can save some money. But if you have a backwards compatible disc collection, that's not great. That actually is uh, interesting. I'm curious to see how the um, PS5 streaming app situation works out because I believe they're launching 
without some big names like Prime Video and uh, HBO Max. And I mean, obviously those are gonna come down the line, but if you don't wanna keep your PS4 hooked up to your TV, but you wanna use those apps, it's a little bit of a disappointment. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what they wrote in the blog post again. Like we're at a point where I gotta wait a little bit to see the final, like to really have a finalized version that is closer to what everybody's gonna see. So I don't wanna be leading anyone astray or breaking any rules for that matter. So we will get we will get to that. It is very hard to to talk and play, by the way. I understand why so many pro streamers have this, but I I think there's that. I mean, I think the Xbox has really got everything, and so the PlayStation is going to have some competition there if you use it as your primary media player. But again, we're going to see see what's there. But the Xbox really does have everything that I can't tell you. Um, have you looked into the difference on media playback for like the Series S, uh, as opposed to the Series X? Because like, so, the, yeah. oh, the Series uh, S well, doesn't play in 4K, but can I watch a 4K Blu-ray with it? Or well, you can't watch a 4K Blu-ray on the Series S, and we don't have the we don't have the Series S. But what I can tell you is that it doesn't have a disc drive. So oh, that's, that's true. <laughs> so that's an all digital system as well. Now, the Series S is a really interesting one. Obviously, we didn't review that one. That's not really the enthusiast audience that we typically go for. But a lot of people really like it. It's really small. It's much smaller than the Series X. But it is not as powerful. And it's more of a 1080p, maybe 1440p system. So in that regard, you know, are you getting your money's worth for the savings? I don't know. But what I can tell you is that it is cheaper. I believe it's two ninety nine, and I think for two ninety nine, that's going to sell a lot this holiday season. Now, Xbox made a promise that the Series S can will be able to play the same games as the Series X, uh, and that's caused a, a bit of a, a controversy over whether the Series S, or rather, games having to maintain Series S compatibility, will hold back uh, development for this generation. Um, do you think that's the case at all? Or um... I mean, do I do I think it's case at all? I mean, probably probably not. I mean, PC exists, right? And so you have a minimum specification that's sort of been set to this to a degree. But I mean, somewhat people are still making games that run on 1060s that then will play better on you know new, the new RDNA two GPUs or the RTX 3080s. So developers have been making for PC for a long time and it just works, you know, you can scale up. And so I imagine it's gonna be something similar to this that you can scale up. What is interesting is that there have been reports that Series S games are actually significantly smaller sometimes than Series X games. They might download a lot faster because they're leaving behind a lot of the higher res 4K files. Wow, so let's see what other questions we have here. Are there Netflix, YouTube, and Twitch apps pre-installed? So then, um, again, I can only really talk about the Xbox right now, but, but uh, oh, look at this, they've added their, this is already has a super sampled 6K, 60 FPS update. Um, you're not gonna be able to see that on here at all, right? Like, because it's not streaming that way, but. We, we will see how it looks. Um, they're not pre-installed. If you bring over your settings from your last Xbox, they should reinstall. If not, there is just a most popular entertainment tab. And that really has most of the stuff. If you go to the regular store, you might have to look. Like I was in the regular store at first and I was just looking for HBO Max. And it was bury a little bit but it was there there are also some viewers like there was one called z twitch which is not actually twitch i'm sure it's fine but i didn't try it because you know i wanted actual twitch they're not pre-installed but you know they're free to install again we will see how the playstation looks in every region once it launches what's the um the sound like with these systems like do they get loud uh when the fans start spinning um, up or noise okay i'm glad you brought that one up um, they're both, I'd say, if you had like a, a PS4 jet engine, then, you know, you're not going to, I'm actually going to stop the camera. Oh, no. 
I think we can make move it to us for the moment. Um, you know, you're not going to have the PS4 jet engine. That's kind of gone. In fact, if you're hearing anything making noise right now off my microphone, that's my that's my computer. Um, the Xbox Series X is really impressively impressively quiet. Like, I'm talking like almost silent especially at idle it has a single fan at the top and everything just comes in through there and like you really have to like put your ear to it to hear it make noise the ps5 a lot of people are talking about how quiet it is mine hasn't been perfectly quiet like the fan definitely makes some noise it's made like a little bit of a high pitched sound occasionally when in sleep mode but it's sort of intermittent if you are you know if you're three five six feet away though and playing a game it's not loud enough that you're going to have a hard time that you're going, Oh no, this is so bad. It's ruining my experience. Yep. So uh, quick, qu uh, we have time for one more question and that sure. is, can you tell us what PS5 3d audio sounds like? Sure. So, the PS5 good, they, they say. sure. so they call it Tempest audio. And I can tell you that having played like, so you can, in fact, where's my dual, where's the dual sense? You can plug a head, you can plug headphones in here. I don't have in my home in a very advanced speaker system. I know a lot of people do. They really care about that audio, so I can't really speak to that. But plugging headphones into here is—it's actually very much like the PS3. I did feel like sound coming through, like even some very basic headphones, was richer than on the PS4 before it. Um, the other thing, and I actually don't know if it's technically part of Tempest or not, is that there is the speaker in the controller. And when it's synced with a game, like in Spider-Man, for instance, you know, you thwip with the right trigger and then it thwips and it's by your hand rather than by the TV. And I think that's just a really neat feature. Though you do lose that if you have headphones in because it's not gonna make those sounds. I think we're really gonna have to wait a little longer to see like, the full potential of something like 3D audio because there's not a ton of games right now that offer it. So we have to see how third-party developers and more first-party developers integrate it into their games the games that were truly designed for the PS5 and not necessarily meant to be across platforms. So one more question. I know we weren't, we weren't going to take more, but this one is a, is a good, good closing question. What console is best for your money in the long run? Uh, um, that, you know, it's funny. I, these things very much like, you know, like PCs in a way, like they they last for years. Some people, up, some people upgrade their PC every year. I shouldn't say that, but you know, these until they do their eventual redesign, which they always do. This is probably going to last you, if I had to guess from previous console generations, five, six, seven years before they release a new full one. Sounds, I see Michelle nodding. That sounds about right. Um, it's <laughs> I'm, hard just, to, I'm nodding yeah. because I am praying for that PS5 redesign. Yeah. Well, so the thing about it is, is the Xbox going to be better in five years? Is the PlayStation going to be better in five years? It's really hard to say because if you look at the Xbox One back when it launched, versus what the Xbox One looks like today. It was entirely different. The Xbox One was pitched as this media device and it had HDMI in and they, they threw all that out and made it about gaming again. So I don't wanna say, oh yeah, the Xbox based on what it is now, is gonna be better than the PS5 in five years because they may can completely change what they do. What's gonna matter are the games they put out and the third party ones again are gonna be largely the same, but Microsoft went out and just bought a bunch of studios you know, if you're going to want Halo, if you want Cinema 2, if those are the games from those studios you like, if you want, if you want, oh, I, well, I won't even get Bethesda into Bethesda games now. Yeah, I'm going to say, I, mean, I won't even get into the Bethesda situation because we don't know. Then you're going to want the Xbox. If you want Game Pass and all that that offers you, then the Xbox is the better ecosystem for you now. It's the one that behaves more like a gaming PC. If you have a gaming PC, you can use Game Pass on both if you get Game Pass Ultimate. So in that way, it, that's what's better for you then. If you want the system that has the Sony exclusives from the Sony studios with that great rep, again, Spider-Man, God of War, The Last of Us, then you're gonna want the dual, you're gonna want the PlayStation 5 with the dual sense and the con and the controller, which is great. I can't say how third-party developers are gonna use it in five years. Will they use it? So it's hard for me to say this one is better than that down the line. That really depends on what you have to play now and what you want to play in the future. And I can't tell you what that is. I would actually strongly encourage people to consider, you know, waiting a few months to get these if you have something you're currently happy with. Because like you said, the, a lot of these games are going to come to PS4, to Xbox Ones, Xbox One, and to PC. So if you want one, there's a lot of exciting stuff in both of these. I really like them both, but I don't think it's a bad idea 
if you're not sure what you want to hold off because you'll still get to play the games they might just not be the fanciest they ever were great well thank you guys so much thanks to our thanks to our audience yeah. uh and uh you can ex and right now on our site we have andrew's excellent reviews of both systems and we have a face-off between the two of them that you can read so thanks to everyone. Yeah, I'd like and to apologize. I'd like to apologize to everyone watching for the technical difficulties we had earlier in the show. I'm really sorry about that. We did test it, but this does happen. But yes, we we appreciate you reading. We do hope you like the reviews. Great. Well, we'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Right. Bye. Thanks, everybody.